Okay, welcome. So this is uh, relax into health, wealth, and happiness. And good place to start is just to notice your reaction to that. So really just notice what your reaction to that is. It's not hard. shouldn't be hard. So I'll repeat that again. This is relax into health, wealth, and happiness. So notice the reaction. What is it? Do you think that sounds exciting? Do you think that sounds ridiculous? Do you think that that's for other people, but not for you? Do you think that's impossible? Do you think it's a joke? Do you think it's not serious? Just notice what you think about that. And deeper than what you think about it, notice how does that feel? And I don't mean how do you, what do you think about it? What's the, the name of the feeling? I mean, just notice the feeling, just notice the bodily reaction. Maybe I could rephrase it. You can relax into health, wealth, and happiness now. How, does, how do you feel about that? Notice the reaction. Notice what is that bodily reaction to that? If you just notice... And then notice more broadly, just notice your, your state. And then notice your opinion about that state. Do you like the state? Do you dislike the state? Do you want this state to stay or do you want the state to go? Is this state the answer or is this state the problem? Now, here's another thing, notice are, how at ease are you? No, you, you can't really be that at ease. So if you have the thought, oh, I'm perfectly at ease, well, take a look. It's okay not to be at ease. If you're not at ease and you say, I'm not at ease, that's a good starting point. If you're not at ease and you insist, oh, I'm, I'm fine.
then what 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 do you, what's really possible then? There's this seems to be this uh, I don't know what to call it a uh, phenomena phenomenon a phenomenon um, that seems fairly reliable, which is that you can only experience what you're willing to receive. So you could imagine that you're surrounded by, you've probably had this experience, you've been surrounded by people who love you and care about you, but you were unable to receive that. So you didn't have that experience. Notice, isn't that funny? It, 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 it's, you could, you've probably had that experience where there, you've been, had people around you who love you and care about you and support you. And you're just in the sourest of moods and you, you know, you're just stewing in it. You know, uh, life sucks. I, I'm miserable. I'm terrible. I'll never be okay. Everything is horrible. So you can't receive that love and support. Now, isn't it funny though, that the opposite is, uh, doesn't work the same way, does it? So you can walk into a room where you are, you, you walk into the room and you're initially, you're feeling great. You so you move, you step into that room and you're surrounded by moody, negative, angry people, resentful, spiteful, And how, how long does your good, good mood last? So same, same principle seems to be at work there though, which is we can, only, we can only receive what we're actually willing to receive. So if we demand, oh, everything's fine. then we're cutting ourselves off. We can't receive anything. So it's best just to start from honesty. So you're not that at ease. I mean, let's say, I want you to imagine absolute ease. Can you imagine that? So you might imagine, for example, uh, what it is to be in deep sleep. So deep sleep is profound ease, isn't it? So now notice Presently, what's your level of ease compared to compared to deep sleep? Isn't it that right now there's sort of a there's this unease that's just sort of simmering? Can't quite get to complete ease, no matter what you do. So now take a look and see what is, what is it that is seeking for whatever it is you're seeking for. So you're, you want something, don't you? Notice that. You want something. Don't you want relief? Okay, so you want relief. You want it. It's like, you know, what, what do we want? Relief. When do we want it? Now. <laughs> You want it now, you want relief now. And how much do you want? Do you want a little bit or do you want complete relief? You want complete relief. You want complete relief and you want it now. Now, here's a funny thing. So again, notice deep sleep. You can remember deep sleep. Because you wake up, you say, I know I was asleep. But who is asleep? 
Isn't this a funny thing? Who is there? Were you there? Well, you could answer that one of two ways. You could either say, yes, I was, or you could say, no, I wasn't. So the, the question is, who, who is the you who was there? Because yes, you were there, but clearly you were not there. So who is the you that was there? Gives you a really big clue, doesn't it? If it's if there's if there's a you who is there and a you who is not there, then who are you really? I mean, it seems obvious, right? When you when you actually look at it. Obviously, who you are is the you who is there, but not the you who was not there. So let's look to see who is this you who is there because you want absolute relief you want it now let's not postpone it so we want to get really clear on it so the you who is the you who can actually have the absolute relief has to be the you who is there in deep sleep Hopefully that makes sense, right? The, it, deep sleep is where we find this absolute relief. And it, let's just make sure that's really clear. In deep sleep, there are no thoughts. In deep sleep, there are no sensations. In deep sleep, there are no disturbances of any kind. So no, you don't have, you're not, in deep sleep, you're not worrying about what's gonna happen five minutes from now. You're not worrying about what did happen. You're not concerning yourself with anything because nothing is, then none of that is there. So this is the absolute relief, the absolute relief of there's no burden. There's an absolutely no burden. There's nothing to burden. Well, who is having that experience? Who's there? Clearly not a thinker. Right? I mean, there's, if there are no thoughts, there's no thinker. It has to be, you can't, you can't have a thinker without thoughts. So there's no thinker. There's no one having sensation because there's no sensation. There's no experiencer because there's no experience. But when you wake up, you say, I, I was asleep. So you were there. But who is that? And by the way, that did that did that one disappear when you woke up, or is that one still here? Has to still be here, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it's a good question. We'll 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 take a look at that. Okay, so you could think about this and you'll never arrive at the answer because clearly the answer is not in thought, right? Because they're in deep sleep, there's no thought, there's no thinker. So we can't arrive, we can't know the one who is present when the thinker is absent by means of thought. The, the thinker doesn't have access to it because the thinker is not there in that state in order to be able to know it. So let's see if we can just directly experience it. So the, the question that came up is who is 
who is experience, who is, who or what is this? And we could fill in the blank, but the, you know, the, the problem that I'm experiencing now, what is that? Okay, so let's look at this now. So you lie in your bed at night, you fall asleep, dream begins. And in the dream, there's a dream you, and the dream you is on the moon. The dream you is in Manhattan, or the dream you is under the ocean, or the dream you is a turtle, or the dream you is a cloud. Any number of possibilities, any, the dream you is 20 years in the past. Then you wake up and you say, oh, it was a dream. Now, where, where is the dream character? And what is the dream character? What is that? What is the whole dream? What is that whole experience? What happened to it? What is it? Did it? Where did it go? So the same, in the same way, this thing that we perceive as the problem is like that. So as long as we're asleep to it, meaning we're, we're asleep, so, we, so the dream is occurring unconsciously, then whatever... The, there's a tendency, it's just a tendency. Don't know why. There's a tendency there for it to have a particular form. You know, we could say, well, why when you when you go to sleep, why do you why why does the dream take that particular form? Why do you sometimes have a good dream? Sometimes you have a bad dream. Why is it sometimes in the future, sometimes in the past? Why is it sometimes you're witnessing in third person, sometimes second person, sometimes first person? Why? Why is this mystery? So in the same way this is happening, you're in this waking state, the, the, this, you're asleep, And so there's in that waking sleep, there's a tendency that's playing out because it's unconscious. So it's like a wrinkle. You're, it's like you're asleep, the sheet is over you, it's got a wrinkle. You're not awake. So you're not recognizing it as a wrinkle. You perceive it in a particular way in your sleep upon waking you realize oh there's a wrinkle in the sheet smooth it out so then it's seen clearly but in the sleep it's perceived however it is because there's just a tendency there so this present experience that we say i started out you know how how at ease are you well, not, not completely, there's some agitation, it has to be some agitation. And that agitation, because there's a tendency, a habit, whatever, 
that's how we perceive it. But notice what happens. No, notice how easily it can morph. So even as I'm speaking and you're looking, you're looking to your own experience, you're observing your own experience, just notice how it can morph. What happens to it? You thought it was one thing. Now, maybe you still think that's there, but notice how actually it's, it's actually morphed. Now there's, it's morphed into frustration, anger, impatience, irritation, rage, grief, numbness. So there's just a wrinkle, an agitation. And then in our sleep, we interpret that, perceive it a myriad ways. But we think, no, what I'm perceiving is real. So let's look at this. Why, why is this happening? So when we say, I am this person, I am the, this story, I am these limitations, I have these problems, I am solving these problems, I am doing these things, I am succeeding, I am failing, all of that, we are further reinforcing that sleepful state so that we continue to perceive in ignorance, not perceiving the actual direct reality. And so we're seeing, perceiving only through the dream. But again, notice who is, who is it that is in, who is it that has this experience of deep sleep when they're dreamless sleep? There's no dream, no dreamer, no content, no objects, no thoughts, no agitation, nothing. And yet you know that you have that experience. You know that you had that experience of deep sleep. So notice that that one, that you remains, it's still here. So just in the same way that in the dream state, their dream phenomena occurs, dream perception occurs here in the waking state, waking phenomena, waking perception occurs, but it's an overlay. And so this is really important for understanding why and how we can relax into health, wealth, and happiness. So there is a gap between what is and what we perceive. And that gap, when we're wound up, when we're immersed in this perception when we believe these things to be real and we believe I am this person, I am these experiences, I have these problems, I am doing, I am succeeding, I am failing, all that, then we overlook this gap. And so what happens is there's, it's more and more tightly wound up. So it's like a spring coiled and it's just getting coiled, wound up tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And you wonder why do you feel so uneasy? 
because it's, it's wound up so tightly and everything you do trying to fix it just winds it more tightly. And then you wonder, why do I feel so much rage? Why do I want to lash out? Why am I, why do I feel like a, like I'm coiled so tightly? Because everything that you do trying to fix it contributes to how tightly wound it is. And notice now, if you were to just imagine, wouldn't it be a relief to just let it unwind? Just to let it go, completely let it go. Wouldn't that be a relief? Surely it would be a relief. But see why you don't do it. Well, if I let it go, if I really let that unwind, that would be dangerous. I'd kick, I'd scream, I'd flail, I'd murder. I'd say no. <sighs> Honey, would you do that thing? No. End of the world. So we're afraid or, you know, just our lives would fall apart. Wouldn't do all the things that we don't want to do. Wouldn't, which is pretty much everything. Well, what would you do if you didn't feel obligated to do it or if you didn't have a sense of desperation that you must in order to, to succeed in something? achieve something, fix something, figure something out, what would you do? None of it. So it's dangerous. But here we can use our imagination. So just close your eyes. And just imagine, feel how tightly wound up you are. Feel how tightly wound up it is, just how it's ready to snap, to lash out, to recoil. Just feel, feel that, feel that, that tension that just, oh, I want so desperately to be free of this. And then notice how you keep preventing it from being released. You just keep it under control. But feel how tightly wound it is. Feel how tightly wound it is. It's so tightly wound and just feel it just keeps getting more and more tightly wound and you can't seem to fix it. You can't do anything to get it right. Nothing that you do ever is enough, never is good enough, never the right thing, never adequate. Just keeps coiling and coiling and coiling. Feel how uncomfortable it is. And then just in your imagination, only in your imagination, completely in your imagination, just let it go. Let it do its thing, completely out of control. Just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it whip and thrash and uncoil and recoil and do whatever it does. Just let it go, 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 let it go. Just keep letting it go. Just in your imagination. So it's totally, it doesn't touch you. It doesn't matter. It's just in your imagination. Now, hopefully you discover how wonderful that is. So, now you can notice this gap, this we can't can't say what it is, but there's a but it's free and it's here. 
So just allow your imagination just to remain open and free. Just in the imagination, don't worry about anything else. Don't give any concern to anything else. You might have any other kind of perception or experience that you might categorize as anything else, but just in your imagination, just allow it to remain free, open. So you might notice how wonderful this is. Maybe you notice how wonderful it is. And maybe for a while, nothing enters. Maybe it's totally free, totally spacious, totally empty, just bliss, freedom. Maybe you can recognize that this is the you, same you, same you who recognizes deep dreamless sleep. And then at some point, whether it's happened yet or not, some thought will enter. And just watch and notice, how does the thought catch? So for example, try, try, try this. Okay, here, I'll propose a thought to you. Here's a thought, red, as in the color red. I'll propose another thought, sky. I'll propose another thought, down. So just notice in their pure forms, okay, so it's possible you have some sort of association with those words or those ideas. But if you have no particular association or certainly no strong association with those, then you can notice that there's no charge there. They, they're just, there's no catch. Nothing about them really matters. It's just, a sound, maybe some slight sense of perception or some slight form or some slight feeling, but nothing, nothing to really catch on. So they don't last, they just come and go, don't really have that much meaning, certainly not very important. Now, notice though, if you have a thought such as, I understand this, or I don't understand this, and 
Now, it's certainly possible that you may just be in such a state presently that nothing can catch because you're just totally unwound. You're just that which is totally open, free. So there's nothing to catch on. Even the thought I doesn't refer to anything. There's nothing there for anything to take hold of. So that's, that's a possibility. And if that's your experience, that's fine. That's great. But it's also possible that if you think I have, I understand it or I don't understand it, that there's some sense of something that this catches on. So that that, that gap is bridged with a giant hook. So we no longer have awareness of the gap, but instead just this hook. And then this hook takes on all of these different forms, depending on our particular tendencies. So we might perceive this hook as I'm in pain, I'm suffering. I'm miserable. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. I'm fearful. So if it catches on anything, then again, let it wind up. So feel the agitation. If you notice agitation, feel it winding up, let it wind up. Don't try and stop it. Feed into it, let it get wound up, really wound up. You can feel it if you can. If you can feel it, you can feel the discomfort of it. So just don't deny it, don't lie about it, don't sugarcoat it, just tell the truth about it. There it is, it's got it. it's, there's the hook, hooks in me, feel it, it's uncomfortable, I hate it, angry. It's hopeless, I can't, nothing works. You know, just let it, let it get wound up. Feel it, feel the agitation, let it get really, really, really wound up. Then again, close your eyes and just in your imagination, still perceiving that it's all wound up, really, really, really wound up. I mean, like so wound up that you, you wanna just leap out of your own skin, so uncomfortable, so agitating. And then just in your imagination, just let it go, let it unwind. It's like whatever, whatever image works for you, you can notice it whipping and thrashing and spinning and, and it's just in your imagination. So whatever happens is fine. You know, it's like, this is, it can be a whirlwind. It can destroy everything. It can destroy you. It can destroy all the other people, it can destroy your home, it can destroy this whole earth, the whole universe, it, whatever. Just let it, let it go completely. It doesn't, it's not in control. Let it go. So let it go to completely unwind.
So when you when it's all wound up and you're in that dream of it being all wound up, you literally cannot perceive this reality of freedom. You can only think about it. You can only dream about it. You can only turn it into some thing that you might be able to attain in the future, just some idea of it, which just feeds into it getting more and more wound up. It's all just part of the suffering. So when you're in that state, you cannot get yourself out of it. There's no way you can't do that. It's like trying to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. So don't lie about it. Don't deny it. Don't push it away. Because trying to do so is just feeding into it, just making it worse. But in an instant, when you finally see what is really going on, when you're no longer denying it and you really let it wind up so tightly that there's no way that you're willing or can even hold it together any longer, then you can and you must just let it uncoil, let it be out of control in your imagination. So when you really let it be completely out of control in your imagination, then it's just, it's going wildly, absolutely wild. There's no possibility of getting, regaining control mid unwind. I mean, it's thrashing and whipping and it, it will destroy you if you try. So you just don't. And you see how completely out of control it is. But it's just in your imagination. So it's, it's fine. It's out of control. It destroys everything in your imagination. There's no world anymore. No universe nothing to reconstruct. And so then there's just this, which is always beyond control, which when you notice it's you, you are here, you remain. So everything that can be controlled is no longer you're no longer involved in it. It's totally out of control and you are that which remains. And this is the same you who is present during deep sleep. But as I said, when you are involved in that dream, the waking state dream, when you're all wound up in that and you're invested in that, trying to fix your problems, you literally cannot recognize this. There's no way to lie your way to this. No amount of mental gymnastics will make this a reality, but you can directly experience this reality now. So again, several possibilities. One is that you may find that you're just, you just remain as this open freedom 
So this is total relief. And it's now. So don't do anything. Why would you? Just don't. Another possibility is that something will start to catch. So if something starts to catch, then you have two possibilities. One is that you, you have to go through this whole thing again and wind it all up and get it really wound up. And then in your imagination, let it all unwind and wildly, and then just allow yourself to rest in this freedom that remains. But the other possibility is here, in this moment, in this instant, you are, you are able to recognize before it really starts, before it really catches, you start, you're able to recognize that there's nothing for it to really catch on. It's just, just dream stuff. So before, it, there's just this initial sense of, oh, it, it might be starting to catch. Oh, there might be a problem. Oh, I might be uncomfortable. And just in that instant, just look and just see what's here. So it's like, now it's like a lucid dream. You're awake in the dream. The dream continues. There's still stuff happening. There's still phenomena occurring. There's still thoughts happening still even a, a sense of me, myself, and I, but it's, it's like uh, semi-transparent now, so that, because you're awake to it, so it, it doesn't have to go away, but you can just observe it and see there's actually nothing here. There's nothing that's really happening. There's nothing to catch. There's nothing that, there's nothing, you know, like you have, what can wind up if there's nothing for it to wind around. So this, At a, at, we could perceive this in many different ways. We'll wrap it up today by looking at it in one, just one of many ways of looking at it. It's not the one truth. It's just a model that can be a useful one. From a, a biological, physiological model, the brain and body change under stress. So anytime that we perceive that I have a problem that's generating stress, And so anytime we entertain that, then what's happening is that we're unwittingly feeding into changes in the nervous system and the whole body that, for example, under stress, the size of the, there's a structure in the brain called the hippocampus, it shrinks. Also under stress, the, the uh, white matter of the brain and the nervous system more broadly is uh, damaged, which means that signals in the nervous system become uh, they're no longer attenuated well. So 
signals don't travel as far, they lose coherence. So everything in the nervous system starts to change so that we literally are unable to access or recognize or perceive a, a greater reality. Everything becomes very short-term, urgent, and fear-based. The more that we perceive problems, the more problems we perceive. And so when we find ourselves in that situation, we're all wound up and we, no matter what we do, trying to fix that, all we do is feed into that more. So again, it's like trying to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It won't work. The biggest problem is that we, in that state, we don't know what else to do. And so we just keep doing the same thing. And initially, we don't get the feedback that it's not strong enough. The feedback isn't strong enough when we, when we really let go, when we really relax. We don't get strong enough feedback because the nervous system is not, or is not uh, organized in such a way at this time because of the chronic stress. It's not organized in such a way that it's able to produce that feedback strongly enough that we are able to say, I'm confident now that I know the correct way. And so we just keep defaulting to the old way. We just keep on letting the, trying to bridge that gap with whatever hooks come. Anytime there's a hook, we hook into it. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm discouraged. I'm never going to make it. I can't understand it. It doesn't work for me. They don't understand my problems. They don't understand how hard I have it. Why me? Why is my life so hard? Why is life so hard? Why is everything, why is everything suffering? Why, is, why does suffering exist? Why do I have to suffer? On and on and on and on. All these are the hooks. They come along and we hook, in, we hook into them. So we have to allow ourselves to unwind and then to rest in that. That's deep relaxation. The deep relaxation is not it's not the physical relaxation is part of it, but the physical relaxation only takes us so far. So physical relaxation is good, but then it can also lead into, it can feed into more of the same trouble, which is we say, oh, I'm not able to relax enough. Can't do it well enough. When will it end? Why me? Why is life so hard? Why is it so, why does it take so long? So there's this a deeper relaxation. This deeper relaxation is what undoes all of it and it undoes it by allowing it to allow, letting it go. Letting it go. Not to get rid of it, but letting it go as in no longer trying to control it. So it is out of control. It is out of control. It's completely out of control. And, but this is just in your imagination. I want to be clear about that because if, you, if this is, this is not about you going on a rampage and, you know, letting everybody know what you, what you really think of them because that would not, that's not necessary and it wouldn't really work out all that well. But this is about just in your imagination, letting it go, letting go of all of that control, letting it unwind wildly so that this deeper relaxation can reveal itself. And then just to rest in that and to watch all of the, 
I too, like I've said, two, one of two things is likely to happen. One is you may find that here there's nothing for, for at least for some while, there's nothing for anything to latch into. Or the whole sense of me, myself, and I just disappears. There's nothing there, nothing for anything to latch into. There are no constructs of any kind. It's requires too much effort to try and piece that back together. And there's no one to even make that effort. I mean, there's just a complete absence of it. So that's one possibility. You may experience that. If you experience that, then just rest in that. And, but then almost invariably, I mean, eventually, maybe no, no longer does anything, the, no more problems arise. For most of us, after some while, a problem will seem to arise. And so then we either can just watch that and see that actually, that initially it might seem like there's something for it to hook into, but if we were really watchful, we will see there's nothing there. So we can sort of extend the deep relaxation just by be, remaining very watchful and seeing that is, are, is any of this true? Because it's just thoughts. The thought says, I'm suffering. I have to do something. I have a problem. This isn't okay. All these thoughts. But if we're really watchful, we can see that none of them are true. But the other possibility is that they will latch on, start to wind up. And at that point, when it's, when, once it's wound up, like my kids, then there's, then we, rather than fight it, which would just make it unconscious, then just go with it wind it up, get it all wound up, and then let it go again. Let it, not to get rid of it, but just to let it be out of control, finally, just to wildly unwind and do its thing, because it's like a, a coiled snake. You know, it's so wound up, and it's ready to strike. And the more we suppress it, the tighter it gets wound up, and it's just, when it finally does strike, it's going to strike in a terrible way. So if we let that happen unconsciously, it's going to be devastating. But if we allow that in our imagination, consciously releasing that wildness and let it do what it does in the imagination, it's just in the imagination. So there's no problem. Let it, like I said, let it destroy the whole world. I mean, isn't it, don't you have that in you? Don't you have doesn't the, doesn't the rage build up to that point? It gets so coiled up and you just want, you want, you want, you know, you want to kill every, it's like a mass homicide, suicide. You know, you're just like, nuke them all and then, and then put the gun to your own head. And we, but then we say, Oh no, I'm such a spiritual loving person. I can't do that. I can't. So, so that, so then of course it just keeps getting wound up, wound up, wound up, wound up, wound up until it comes out sideways in your life. So here, just in your imagination, you just let it get that wound up. You can feel it. You can't hold on to it any longer and then just let it go. And it goes wild and does whatever it does and let it go. Watch it, see, see the destruction and feel the liberation of it to finally not be holding that any longer, not be trying to control the uncontrollable. Okay, so for those who are here live, we'll stay on for the q and I'm going to end this recording now.